Hi there and welcome to the History Teacher. This revision video covers Weimar and Nazi Germany from the Edexcel 9 to 1 course. Hopefully you'll also find it useful if you're studying any of the other exam boards or if, like me, you just love history. You can now become a member to support me to continue making this content for as little as £1 a month. Plus you'll get exclusive access to resources and be able to vote on forthcoming episodes. The link is on your screen right now. Hi there guys, we're into topic two now and we're going to be looking at the early years of the Nazi party up to 1923 and the Munich Putsch. Lots of you will know some information about Hitler's life before 1918, but this doesn't come up on the spec. However, if you'd like to know more about this, there is a card on screen right now which will take you to Biographic's great video on the personal life of Hitler. We, however, are interested in passing our exam, so let's look at the information we need to know. Adolf Hitler was 29 years old when the First World War ended. He was in hospital after temporarily losing his sight when the news of the armistice broke. Unsure what to do with himself, Hitler joined the local army, working as a spy watching local activist groups, which is how Hitler first came into contact with the DAP, or the German Workers' Party. The group had been formed by Anton Drexler in March 1919 and was tiny. At their first meeting, only 23 people attended. However, Hitler liked the attitude of the party, particularly their anger at the armistice and the Treaty of Versailles. So, in September 1919, he joined the party. Hitler began to give speeches to the members and quickly became a leading member. By 1922, he had total control of the party and he achieved this in five ways. The first was the development of party policy. Hitler published his 25-point programme in February 1920. The key points of this were, he was strongly opposed to the Weimar government, especially those who were seen as the November criminals, those who had signed the armistice, and those who accepted the Treaty of Versailles, which he saw as an insult to Germany. It was also anti-democracy. Hitler believed democracy to be weak and too open to indecision. He wanted to see a single strong ruler in charge of Germany. The 25 points were also deeply anti-Semitic, blaming the Jews for the economic problems of Germany. The programme stated that only those of German blood are members of the nation and that no Jew may be a member of the nation. You will remember there had been a lot of anti-Semitic feeling following the armistice and the Treaty of Versailles. Another way Hitler achieved the leadership of the party was through his own personal appeal. He practiced his speeches carefully and used lots of persuasive devices including drawing the audience in, showing passion using shouts and hand gestures and escalating his speech volume and language. His speeches were very persuasive and by the end of 1920 around 3,000 people would come to hear him speak. Hitler was aware of how powerful his speeches were and had photographs and paintings made showing him as a great orator. The next step for Hitler was to reorganise the party. In 1920, a permanent office was set up from which to run the party. As a result of this, the party's meetings became more organised and better advertised. Hitler then went on to rename the party the National Socialist German Workers' Party, the NSDAP, or Nazi for short. This was to spread the appeal of the party more widely to more people. Hitler then began working on a logo for the party and settled on the swastika and began to use the straight arm salute. This branding was clear and set the party apart from others of a similar nature. The increased membership and better organisation led to the creation of the NSDAP's newspaper, the Volkischer Beobachter, or People's Observer. This allowed the NSDAP to spread the message of the Nazi party more widely and it quickly reached a readership of 17,000 people. Now that the message of the Nazi party was reaching more and more people, Hitler began to think about the leadership of the party. It was important for him to get the right people into the right jobs to further the party's aims. He also needed to ensure that the people who surrounded him would be loyal to him. Several people who became important leaders of the Nazi party were chosen. They included Rudolf Hess, who became Hitler's deputy leader, Hermann Goering, a young fighter pilot who would go on to become the leader of the Luftwaffe, the German Air Force, and Ernst Röhm, who led the SA and was known for his violence. Hitler also developed links with important business and military leaders, including General Ludendorff, who was a wealthy army leader who had been influential in developing the stab-in-the-back myth. Finally, although Hitler had shaped the policies, structure and leadership of the party, he used one last tactic to ensure discipline within the party and to undermine the other parties of the Weimar Republic. In August 1921, Hitler formed the Sturmabteilung, or SA. This was a private army made up of the unemployed and ex-army soldiers. They were expected to be completely loyal to Hitler. However, many of the SA were a law unto themselves, so Hitler formed the SS to act as his personal bodyguard. The SA were given uniforms of brown shirts and so became known as the brown shirts. All of these measures were successful in allowing Hitler to gain complete control of the NSDAP. 
At the party conference in January 1922, Hitler gave a two and a half hour speech in which he persuaded the members to give up their rights to elect a leader and he immediately took on the role. By now, Hitler had total and dictatorial control of a party which numbered 50,000 members. Okay, that is everything you need to know about the early years of the NSDAP to the 1920s. Now for a quick word from my other half and I will see you next time. History teacher's SO here. She's given up work and is living off her savings to make these videos full time. Unfortunately, savings don't last forever. So we're asking for your help. If you can spare any money to help her keep making these videos, please visit the buy me a coffee link in the description and give what you can. That said, we know these are difficult times. You might not have any money to spare, but you can still help. Like, comment and subscribe for the algorithm, but also spread the word. Tell your friends, colleagues and anyone you think might be interested. Interested. Thanks.